Hey everyone, today we're going to give you some tips and tricks for installing security cameras outdoors. We'll go over different installation methods, how to weather seal your cables, when to use junction boxes, and even what to do when you're installing in masonry. Let's jump right into it. First, a quick disclaimer, this is just some general information. The codes and requirements for installing security cameras vary based on where you live. If you're unsure about whether something is safe or compliant with your local building code, you should always contact a qualified professional. The very first thing you need to do when installing outdoor cameras is make sure that the cameras themselves are outdoor rated. These are two cameras, both made by Reolink. This one is weather resistant and rated to be outside. This one is not, it's indoor only. The best way to know whether your cameras are uh, suitable for use outdoors is to check the data sheet provided by the manufacturer. Some manufacturers will give you an IP rating like IP67 and some manufacturers will just say something more vague like weather resistant. I'm looking at you ubiquity. The next thing you'll need to do is decide which installation method you're going to use. We're going to go over three different installation methods today and they all sort of revolve around how to deal with these dongles that most cameras have. Let me explain what these are. So on here, you've got a weather sealable RJ45 or ethernet connector. You've got a DC barrel jack, which is interesting because most manufacturers don't even provide a DC power supply with a barrel jack. So I'm not really sure why these places include them, but they do. And then Reolink usually also provides these external reset buttons. Uh, as well, for some other cameras like this Amcrest camera, the reset button will be on the board of the camera inside the housing. The first method to consider, and by far the nicest looking method, but hardest to do, is to just bring this whole cable dongle through your wall or ceiling. Step one is to choose your mounting location. Make sure that you're giving enough room for the camera to be adjusted and moved around. Next, you're gonna mark the wall where the screws will go and where the cable will come through. Some cameras include these sticker type templates. Uh, I just like to use this skinny construction pencil along with the actual mount. Um, I don't like putting the sticker on. It's hard to remove later and it, it's just easier for me to use the pencil, but that's just my personal preference. Like I said before, the biggest downside to this installation method is you're going to need to drill a big hole to get this whole cable dongle through. So you can see here that I've found a spade bit that is just a slightly bigger diameter than that of the waterproof ethernet connector. I'm going to drill the hole for the cable pass through first. If you're using drywall anchors or if there's some other reason you think you need to pre-drill holes for the screws, you'll do that next. And finally, we're going to just install the camera. Uh, the steps for that will vary based on the camera you're using, so check your camera's instructions, but this part should be pretty straightforward. You can see here that the camera I'm using uses this metal mounting plate and then the camera sort of twist locks onto that. So you can see now that we've passed the cable dongle through our fake wall here. Uh, one benefit, I guess, of installing it this way is you don't actually need to use the waterproofing portion of the waterproof ethernet connector since the cable dongle and the connections will be indoors. The other downside to installing cameras this way is that it can be pretty hard to weather seal where the cable goes through the wall for a couple of reasons. First, you needed to drill a really big hole that you now have to plug. And also, you can see here as I'm installing this camera, I actually need to slide the cable through the wall. So I can't just plug the hole and then slide the cable through because then the whatever I'm using to weather seal uh, will come right out. So you'll have to get a little creative with weather sealing if you're using this method of installation. With that said, let's now go over how weather sealing works because that is a very important topic. First of all, if you have any cable entrances that are exposed to the rain, you're gonna wanna make what's called a drip loop. What a drip loop does is it prevents any water that may have gotten onto the cable from running along the cable and then coming into your building. In my opinion, there are two good methods for weather sealing your cable penetrations. The first way of weather sealing your cable penetrations is by using silicone. I know a lot of people love doing it this way. I personally find that it's a little messy. If you do do it this way, make sure you're using silicone that is rated for outdoor use and is rated for the temperature range that you're expecting based on where you're installing these cameras. The second way of doing it and the way I prefer doing it is by using what's called duct seal. The best way I can describe this is it's sort of like Play-Doh. It's very malleable and it doesn't dry out once it's applied. You can see here that I'm using my fingers to form sort of a cone shape around where the cable goes through the wall. It's possible that this won't provide as perfect of a weather seal as silicone would, but I've personally never had any issues doing it this way. And also, if you need to move the cable or change something in the future, it is so much easier to remove and re-add and make adjustments. Finally, let's talk about something that I see all the time that drives me nuts, and this is how to not weatherproof your cable. 
If you've ever seen a cable penetration done by a big cable company, you might have seen these plastic bushing things. They don't actually do any weather sealing. What I think they're meant for is to sort of provide a smooth surface to for actually like pulling the cable through the wall. If you have metal siding, this could prevent the jacket of the cable from scraping against your siding and being like peeled off or otherwise damaged. But on their own, they don't actually provide any weather sealing. And like 95% of the time I see these things in the field, they've, they've slid out of the wall and are just sort of sitting on the drip loop of the cable. If the, Cable company even bothered to put a drip loop in. If you do want to use a cable bushing for your installation, make sure you're using it in conjunction with silicone so that you actually do get a weatherproof seal. The other two installation methods we're going to go over today involve using junction boxes, so let's talk about what these are. So these are pretty much exactly what they look like. They're just a metal box and they provide a few benefits. The first benefit of using junction boxes is that they give you a place to hide your camera's cable dongle. It means that the hole you're drilling through your wall only needs to be big enough to pass through the ethernet cable that you're using, not the giant connectors on the dongle. The other benefit they provide is if there's ever an issue with the camera, they make it a lot easier to service or replace the camera. That's because since the connection is inside the junction box, you don't need to remove the weather sealing, you don't need to pull cables back and forth through the wall, the whole connection to the camera is outside, inside that junction box, making it really easy to remove and replace the camera. The only real downside to using junction boxes is that they make the installation look not quite as clean. They add a little bit of bulk to the camera. But if you're installing cameras in a commercial or business setting, I've found that the pros generally outweigh this con. If you're using real link cameras like I am here, they actually have two different sizes of junction box. If you don't know which one you need for your camera, you can use our real link project calculator, punch in all the cameras you're using and it'll tell you how many of each junction box to buy. There's a link to that in the video description. The first thing you may or may not have to do based on the model of junction box you're using is rearrange these ports on the outside here. So for this particular real link junction box you can see that I have to remove this cable gland on the side, remove this sort of blank bit from the back, install the blanking bit on the side, and so what that leaves me with are two blanked out holes that are closed and sealed and then an opening in the back and that opening in the back is where we're going to pull the cable through that's coming through our ceiling or wall. Another thing you can optionally do to save time, and this is actually something I do myself to save myself a bit of time, is to pre-install the camera's mounting plate onto the front plate of the junction box. And you can see here that that also involves passing the camera dongle through the cable gland on the front plate of the junction box. This just saves me a little bit of time when I'm installing cameras out in the field. All I need to do uh, once the junction box is up is screw the front plate of the box onto the box itself. It just saves me a couple of minutes and lessens the chance that I'll drop a screw into the snow or in a sewer grate or in a pile of leaves. So just like before, we're gonna mark the holes that we need to drill and where the screws are gonna go. Like I alluded to earlier, if you're terminating your own cable, the hole going through the wall only needs to be as big as the diameter of your ethernet cable. Now I'm going to install the box, pull the cable through, terminate the cable, weather seal that cable penetration as best I can, and now we're gonna set up that waterproof ethernet connector. And again, the exact steps you need to follow here will depend on the model of camera you're using, so just follow the instructions that came with the camera. Even though we're using the junction box and the junction box is in theory watertight, it's still best to use that waterproof ethernet connector just in case any water or moisture gets through. I have seen that happen before. Another optional step and something that I will do from time to time is fill the waterproof ethernet connector with some dielectric grease. This will keep out not only rain and direct water, but it'll also help prevent just general corrosion from moist air happening on the connector. I know this looks kind of weird and it might feel kind of weird to do it for the first time to just sort of squeeze a grease out into this connector, but this is exactly what dielectric grease is meant for. It's totally fine. Finally, we're gonna tuck in that cable dongle as best we can and put on the lid and that's it. Just like before, this is a nice and neat installation, albeit with a little extra bulk from that junction box, but this is a lot easier to do than that first method. Finally, let's say that you want to install the camera in a location where you can't punch a cable directly through the wall or ceiling, or let's say you just don't want to. You want to punch the cable in from some other place. That's where this third installation method comes in. 
using the junction box to hide the cable dongle, and then using the waterproof gland on the side to feed in some exterior cable. This is actually the most common way that I find myself installing cameras. Before you even pick up your junction box to install it, the very first thing you need to do is check that the cables you're using are rated for outdoor use. This is especially important if you bought your security cameras as a part of a kit that includes cables. The cables that a lot of these manufacturers include aren't actually outdoor rated, they're indoor use only. So what makes an outdoor rated cable an outdoor rated cable? Well, there's a few things that they have in common. The first thing is that they will all have a UV light rated jacket. The jacket is sort of the outermost shell of the cable. Outdoor cables might also have additional weatherproofing features as well as shielding components that both keep out radio frequency interference as well as provide a path to ground for things like weather events and static discharge. You may or may not need all of these features, but one thing to look out for is shielding. Take a look at the ethernet connector on your camera. If it's made of metal or has a metal tab inside of it, it's best to use shielded cabling. Depending on how your camera is built, this might provide a path to ground for the camera, or it might help keep out radio frequency interference from the cable. If you do decide to use shielded cables, you must also use a shielded ethernet connector or RJ45 connector. These are made of metal instead of plastic. So this is the cable we use. This is Ubiquiti's UISP Cable Pro. You can see that here are the you know, signal ethernet pairs. And then there's this little plastic layer that I believe is for weatherproofing. And then there's this, this is called a drain wire. It's basically a uh, copper line that is what actually does the grounding for the shielding. And then there's this foil layer, which is the shield. And then there's this black jacket on the cable and this jacket is UV rated. Okay, so now that we've gone through all that and determined that we can use this cable outdoors, let's install this junction box. It's gonna be mostly the same process as before, drilling the holes, mounting the box, but instead of putting the cable through the wall, we're just gonna pass the cable through the gland on the side of the box and tighten down that gland before we terminate the cable. Finally, I highly recommend that you pick up some of these easy install cable clips. They save you a lot of time and they make things a lot easier. There's a link to them in the video description. Finally, what if you need to install in masonry, like brick or concrete? Fortunately, the process doesn't change that much, but unfortunately, you will need some special tools and special hardware. The first thing you're going to need is a special type of drill called a hammer drill. There's two main types of hammer drills. The first is this big kind called a rotary hammer. These are really great for making bigger holes. The other type of hammer drill just looks like a normal drill. You can see on this Milwaukee power drill here that on the clutch, there's this little hammer icon. If you turn it to that, it will put the drill into hammer drill mode. As far as hardware goes, instead of normal screws or the screws that came with your camera, you're going to want to look for masonry screws or masonry anchors. This is the type I prefer. They're called Tapcons, and the reason I like them is they're designed to drill directly into brick or concrete without having to first hammer in some kind of plastic anchor. Um, these are very easy to install, and I've never really had a problem with them. No matter what type of masonry screw or anchor you're using, you will have to pre-drill holes. And it's very important that those holes be the exact size specified by the manufacturer. Otherwise, the anchors won't be able to screw in or they might even pull out. When you're screwing things into masonry, I know it can be really tempting to drill into the grout instead of the brick or block because it's a lot softer and easier to deal with. But because it's softer, it also makes it a lot easier for the masonry anchors you're using to inadvertently pull out of the wall. That said, you could drill through the grout to bring the cable through the wall because the strength doesn't really matter for that. If you're using installation method number three where there's exposed outdoor cabling and you're doing it on masonry, instead of the easy install cable clips I mentioned, you're going to want to pick up some normal vinyl cable clips and use tap cons or other concrete anchors like I showed you before. All right, I hope this was helpful. I know that was a lot of information and I know it can be a little overwhelming to install your first camera. I know it might sound silly, but if you're not totally comfortable yet, consider just picking up a scrap piece of plywood and trying the installation on there first. That way, once it comes time to drill into your actual house or building, you'll have the confidence you need to do it right. If this video was helpful for you, please consider giving it a like. If you have any additional tips or tricks that I might have missed, please consider leaving them in the comments section below. And if you'd like to see more content like this, please consider subscribing. Thanks for watching.